So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Tonight is February the 24th, 2022. And the topic for this evening is the seven laws of the universe. Um, last week, last episode, I talked about the seven chakras. And if you look at on the screen to the left side, or uh, my left side anyways, it is really about the uh, our seven major chakras, which are energy centers. There's the root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, and the crown. And I talked about how the root chakra is, is our connection to earth, to this, this reality that we are playing in, which is earth itself. And then we go to sacro, solar plexus, and, and upwards. So, and then this is from the humanistic point of view. This, this is, so from the root up. This, and I talked about that. This week, I'm going to talk about the, um, from the universal's point of view. How, how do the, the energy centers map? from the top up, which is from the, what we call the crown chakra, and from the universe, which is like the, just the, the, the top part um, that separates us with, that is beyond ourselves, beyond our, our body, and also beyond what we think of, what we associate um, as, third density or at as um, 3D, a third dimension. So from the universe point of view, so why from the universe point of view? Because we, like all of this dimensions, it is actually created by beings um, that have always existed and they want to have physical experience for us to experience certain dynamics and what is it that they want us to experience it is really for they want us to experience the seven laws of the universe that's why they actually put the the seven laws of the universe represented by our seven chakras within our body so that um, we can actually, ex when we actually understand the seven laws and what are the laws and, and laws, these laws are things that cannot change. So they are the way that this universe, I'm not saying all universes are like that, but for this universe, this reality, that earth is in this universe this is these are the seven laws that governs how we create how our experiences comes about i don't know enough about other universes so i cannot say that it is it applies to all universes i can only say that it applies to this universe it applies to earth it applies to third dimension and it also um, applies to all the other dimensions as, as well because as long as it's within this universe then it has to adhere to these seven laws so what are these seven laws um i uh, just want to actually um, mention that this is not something that you know i was i was it's not something that was transmitted to me i did not um, wake up one day and, and got this. I actually saw a presentation or a talk by um, Matthias Di Stefano, and he talked about these seven laws because he remembered when he was living in um, a planet in the Sirius star system that they actually teach these seven laws to everyone. So, however, on Earth, we are so disconnected from who we are. We, like, we were not taught these seven laws at all. Um, of course, there are, have been ascended masters who gave us parts of these 
So we know about the, the, the chakra system and what each of them does, but we only know it from the perspective of earth. We didn't, um, as far as I know, we don't, or as, as far as my own understanding, I have never actually come across a system that is like the seven laws that he explained. And when I saw that, when I heard that presentation, it made so much sense to me that I know I have, it is something that I would like to share with all of you so that um, you may, not, not saying that you all have to agree with me, I'm just saying that this is a different perspective of what our seven chakras are. And whether you agree with it or not, I just want to share with you so that you can think about it and whatever resonate with you, then feel free to work with it and play with it. And whatever does not resonate, of course, just forget about it. It's, it's, so it is something that I resonate with and I would like to share. And whether you agree with it or not, that's totally your perspective. So, so what are the seven laws? Um, the first thing is that the first one is, uh, from a crown chakra, which is from, I would say, from our eternal selves, from the eternal soul part. It is really our crown chakra, which is, which as I mentioned last week, it's really the totality of all of the other six chakras. It, it, this. So how balanced or imbalanced our other chakras are, that's what, um, that's what the crown chakra represents. So the first chakra from the, the soul's per perspective, from the eternal soul's perspective, it's called mentalism. So why is it called mentalism? The idea is that mind is everything. So mind is everything. So what do I mean by mind is everything? Mind doesn't mean thinking. At, at first I thought, oh, okay, what we think is that we can create what we think. However, it's not just our thinking. Our mind represents more than just our thinking because there are so many thoughts, our mind, there are so many thoughts that crosses our mind. So it's not about um, the thoughts. It's actually about the thoughts that we pay attention to, which actually tells us about who we are. So mind, in essence, the mind that we pay attention to, the mind that we give weight to is, is really represents who we are. So who we are it, actually is what we will experience. So that is the, the whole idea of mentalism. Who we are really governs our experiences, no matter where we are in, whether we are in first dimension, six dimensions, ninth dimension, doesn't matter. Who we are, our mind is really all there is. So there is actually these, what Matthias mentioned is that actually there is only one law, which is this first law, which is mentalism. We only ever experience our mind. So who we are is it governs all of our experience. So your mind, what you focus on, what the thoughts that you give, your attention on is your reality. So you only experience your mind. You only experience the underlying beliefs that you hold dear, that somehow you have incorporated in it into your own being. So that is, that's all, that's, that's, that's the only law there is. However, because we are in a physical body, so in order for our physical body to have, um, to understand what that means, from the, the soul's point of view, this one law is split up into seven. 
in order for us to have a physical experience in order to let us fully comprehend what mentalism or um, mind, all there is is simply mind. So that's why all the other laws are there, all the other six laws are there as well. It's, it's only a derivative that helps to support the first one, which is mind is everything. So who you are, the mind is who you are. So you only experience who you are. And going down from the crown chakra is the third eye. So the, the third eye is, so what are we, what is the importance of the third eye? It's about correspondence. So what is correspondence? Is that what's with what's outside is also what's within. I remember um, listening, like um, I know all of you will probably remember as well that Franco mentioned something like this, is that the, the people that you interact with, you actually, um, your energy, who you are, through the third eye, actually communicate to let them know how they should respond to you. And I know not, not everybody um, understand that, but now it, it actually is very true, is that let's say when I, I can only give, um, understand from my own experience with my relationship with my family, is that when I hold certain thoughts in my mind, when I, when I was at, um, what I would say a more egoic point of view, I thinking that, oh, I am this spiritual person and these other, like my mother or my son or my daughter or my ex, they really don't have the same understanding of spirituality. So I kind of um, dismiss their point of view. So when I relate to them from this, this mindset. So what I get is really, um, they are actually letting me know by they being who they are, um, we are not understanding each other because I was so looking at the world from my point of view, I didn't get to the point where I look at the world from their point of view. So the correspondence, the way I understand correspondence is that the within myself, I have this, this belief that, you know, because when I try to talk to them, they don't really respond to me the way that I like them, that I, I would prefer them to respond to me, that, you know, I'm being misunderstood. So that misunder, being misunderstood and, and that other people don't support me, these are my internal dialogue. And because I have these internal dialogues, that um, that's how my family relate to me, or, or that's my experience of my family, is that I don't have their support. Um, so all of that, but once I, switch that around once I really once I really understand that it's not that they don't support me is that my point of view is so different from them that it is that it's very hard for them to just take my word for it they have to be themselves and them being themselves that's how they communicate with me. And because I already have the belief that I'm being misunderstood, I don't, I don't have other people's support. That's why they're, what, how they communicate with me, I took it as being no support, um, misunderstood. So I actually created that scenario for myself. So what the outside, experience reflecting to me is actually that I have these beliefs 
rightly or wrongly, I have these beliefs within myself. That's why the people around me are showing that. Is they are correspondence. That's what correspondence is. Is that because I have these beliefs within myself, so that's why they kind of, on an unconscious level, read these, read my script. So my script is that you know I, you know, I, no support and misunderstood. So whatever they say, that's how I. Um, perceive them to be that does not mean that they don't support me it's just that their support is very different from what I demand of them so they are actually supporting me it's just that I require like my my I would say what I consider as support is very different from what they consider as support so and that's why that's this correspondence is that whatever it is that I project outside is actually is within me. All these, these beliefs are within me. So that's my understanding of correspondence. And that is what the third eye is about. Is that on a very subconscious level that we, that these um, beliefs send out a, vibration and that the other person receive and they react according to what um, the vibration that I send out. So that's correspondence. And of course, that coming to the third one, the throat is, is vibration. So the, the third law is vibration. So I've already mentioned that the, my beliefs send out a certain vibration. So vibration, throat, throat is about sound. So vibration is really sound. And it's also about how I, the words that I choose, how, um, how I communicate my own understanding, how I communicate my own beingness to other people. So all of these is really my vibration. So my, my vibration is not just who I think I am or my, my beliefs. It's also how well I can translate that um, beliefs, who I am, into words and being able to select the best words and also with the intention behind it as well. So that's what vibration is about. Um, when people that, you know, there, there are some people that are so good at choosing the right words to express themselves. Um, those are the people that I envy a lot. Whereas for myself, I, it's not so as easy for me to just pick out the words and be able to, to express and convey what's within myself. And this is something that I have a lot of learning to do. And I think after doing podcasts for such a long time, I'm getting a little better at it. I hope, but uh, or, or at least I, I believe anyways, I, I, I believe that I'm getting better at it. But still, when I listen back to my the, the, um, the recordings of my podcast, I still one of the, the judgments that I have for myself is, you know, well, this is a lot of ums and ahs and, and pauses in finding the right words. So there is absolutely room for improvement about being able to easily express who I am and in a way that kind of reflects to how comfortable or not I am with who I am. And that is an ongoing um, transformation. That is an ongoing journey to be comfortable with who I am, the beliefs that I hold to the extent that I 
it's, it's easy for me to find the words in order to communicate that with other people and also to the universe as well, because the vibration, the words, the communication that you put out with the intention behind it is really what is going to um, attract the or magnetize the experience that's going to come back. That is really how this all works. So, and so the next one down is really the heart chakra. And for the heart chakra, the, the law for this, the fourth law is really the law of rhythm. So what do I mean by the law of rhythm? We, our heart beats. So our heart has a certain beat, just like our beingness has a certain rhythm. Some people are really fast. They, they think fast, they act fast. Um, well, I, have, I, I used to live with Lucy. So Lucy is definitely a fast person. You can just, you know, like she, she grasps things so easily and what she does in a day, I could easily have spread that through at least two or three days. So her rhythm is fast, whereas I, I think of myself as being a slower person. So my rhythm is very different from hers. And each one has a very unique rhythm that is not just based on our vibration, but it's also based on a lot of things as well. Because rhythm is, everything has rhythm. Every living being has rhythm. Just like the moon has a certain rhythm um, because the earth also definitely have a rhythm. Mm, it used to be the, the Schumann resonance is the rhythm. And we now know that the, the Schumann resonance is much higher because the earth definitely has switched, has changed its rhythm. And so everyone on earth has to catch up to her rhythm. And, um, and we have time to, to slowly trying to catch up to the earth's rhythm. And what I'm trying to say is that everything has a rhythm, just like a day, each day has its own rhythm. There are 24 hours and each of the 24 hours, um, is, there are things that are appropriate to do as a, at a certain hours. And there are things that are not that you can't do it, but it's just, you won't get as much support when you're trying to do something. For example, in the middle of the night, if you're trying to, um, let's say, hold a business meeting and all those things, things, it may not be as easy unless you are trying to meet with somebody that is halfway around the um, globe where they are there daytime. So then that would be okay because um, the rhythm kind of match. So everything has a rhythm. The, the weather has a rhythm within our body. We have a rhythm. So we have to, it's about honoring all those rhythm, honoring your own rhythm and harmonizing with your own rhythm as well. And each person has a rhythm of their own evolution and has a rhythm of their own biology as well. So you have to take all of that into account. And that's really what the heart is about, is harmony, being in harmony with your own rhythm, with who you are, because who you are is influenced by all of these different rhythms, your own being, and also the, um, the rhythm that is outside you, um, outside your physical body, I should say, because there's never anything that's outside of you. Um, outside of our own body's rhythm, there are other people's rhythm that we have to get in sync with. And there's definitely the society's rhythm. So, so when we are in harmony with that rhythm, when we find that rhythm that is supporting us, supportive of our own being, 
then that truly is what is going to um, support our heart chakra. So the, that is the fourth law is about rhythm, is about understanding this rhythm. And when you understand the rhythm, then it goes on to the next. The fifth law is cause and effect. So I mentioned that rhythm is not just regarding your own physical rhythm, it's how you relate to the people around you and also the things and the times around you as well. So your rhythm, how your own vibration and rhythm works together is really, it creates a course. It creates a, your own experience because who you are as a vibration and as a rhythm really is the cause of all of your experience. If you are a person who vibrates high and it has a, um, um, a fast pace, is a fast rhythm, then things are going to happen very fast for you. Whereas if you are more um, or like me, that is that needs to take time to process things, then things are not going to happen as fast because if they happen too fast, I won't be able to um, catch up with it, not right away anyways. So when, um, when I have certain experience, then I have to look at how my own vibration and rhythm um, cause that things to happen. So cause my own experience with that. So why is this important? Why, why is this the fifth law of the universe, cause and effect, important? Because this cause and effect teaches us how to be responsible. So this is really teaching us that who you are, how you interact with other people, how your vibration, your intention, and who you are being is going to attract different experiences to yourself. And, in, and when you have all of these, when you have an experience and you resist that experience without considering how you have actually caused that to happen, then you are, you missed that opportunity to learn. That's why our vibration, when we send out our vibration and together with the rhythm and all of that, and we attract these experiences back to us so that we can learn, we can actually see what is so why am I having these experiences? Why am I getting ill? Why am I um, creating cancer, for example? Or why am I creating you know, this um, pain in my hip or pain in anywhere in the, my body? For example, I was um, experiencing some right, like my right um, shoulder has pain in it. And I was doing some energy tracking to see why is it that I have this pain and I was able to kind of track back to it's because of um, an, an endocrine system more specifically is really my ovaries it's, it's hormonal imbalance that is a contributing um, effect so when I no, when I see that, oh, okay, it's because of that. So when I take, when I make the effort to balance my own ovaries, to balance the rest of my own endocrine system, I actually can could feel my body calming down, and I don't have to um, put tension because when I stressed up, I have this tendency to tighten up part of my body. So, which, which happens to be my, my right shoulder. So that's why when I'm stressed because of hormonal imbalance, then I created this 
pain in my right shoulder for myself. So, so when I find, when I finally tracked the cause to this pain, then I was able to get to dissolving and, and changing and transforming the cause, letting go of the cause so that I don't have to suffer the effect anymore. So it's the same thing is why do we, like, how come our vibration and rhythm and all of that, all of the correspondence, all of these different laws, how come when we have a certain vibration, we attract these experiences back to us? It is not to punish us, but it's actually to, it's the way the universe knows how to support us by letting us know that if you all, if you experience this pain, then you have to do some, you have to really track where, what's the cause of it. And if it's not really a physical pain, it's more of, let's say, a relationship problem, then you have to start to look at who are you being when you're with that person? How are you contributing to the way the relationship is? The, the, the status of the relationship is, is for us to really be responsible for what we are creating. So cause and effect, this law is really about being responsible for who we are being and how we impact and create these, send out these vibration and rhythm that attracts how other people um, would respond and come back to the, these, all of these effects that comes back to us. So that's why the cause and effect is the, the law of responsibilities or, or the law that teaches us responsibilities. It's because our vibration puts out a certain cause. So we are the one that actually causes every reality that we are experiencing. So when we understand that it's not the, when we have something, some experiences that is, that we don't prefer, that instead of projecting it and saying that, oh, my mom doesn't understand me or my mom does not um, support me, instead of doing that is to look at how I am being with my mother, how I'm being with the other members of my family that cause them to not be able to to understand me as well as I would like them to, or not being able to support me in the way that I expect them to. So when I understand that I am the one that, that's creating all my own experiences, and when I changed who I be and start to really be more inclusive and be able to not just look at things from my point of view, but be able to consider other people's point of view and be able to create something else, a different relationship with them, then I would experience something different. So that is the cause and effect. So then the, the sacral chakra is, is about polarity. So, the, the sacral chakra is really the, the chakra or the energy center that has our procreative organs, our sexual organs in there. So that is about the law of creation, polarity. So when we understand um, polarity is about good, bad, positive, negative, um, nice, not nice, all of those things. So polarity is to really understand why is there polarity? So imagine if everyone thinks like me, then um, how far am I able to grow if everybody thinks like me? In the, I would say in the, the reality that I've lived so far is that we, 
when we come across um, suffering, when we come across things that does not, that we feel is negative, it actually assists us to look for answers, to look for the cause, to look for how we can do something better. So negativity, going through bad experiences, um, actually good and bad, they are two different aspects of creation. If everything is just one, it's absolutely the same, then creation would be very limited because we, because, well, all we know is just one thing. So how do we know to create varieties? We don't. It is because of polarity that actually assists everyone to create something new that we have never experienced before because we, um, because our negative experience really motivate us to look for the course, to look for better ways, to look for ways to incorporate other people's opinions in order to create something that is not just good for us, but is good for everyone as well. So that's what polarity is, is for to teach us to understand that the, I would say, that positive and negative, good and bad, are actually simply feedback that assist us to make better creations. So it is, it is through negative experiences that compels us to create something better. For example, I just um, actually, um, I was looking into something called the, the healing code. I forgot who the, the, um, the name of the author already. I think it's Alex something, I forgot what his name is. So he created this healing modality called the, the healing code. <clears throat> Why? Because he, um, his wife was suffering from depression. So, and he himself is a, um, I, th I think he's a psychiatrist and he lived with this, he, he loved his wife and he lived with this beautiful woman who is suffering from depression for, over a decade and so he out of love out of this negative experience of experiencing how his wife was suffering each day is he that's his 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 um momentous that is his fuel to assist him in discovering a way of healing a modality of healing that actually helped his wife to get through her depression. And so he, that's, it's from personal suffering that really helped him to develop this. So that's really what negative experience are there. It's there to kind of jog us to, to put a stop sign and say, okay, some you have to find a be creative and find different way in order to create something that doesn't that may not just benefit you but it may benefit everyone else as well this is the the power of polarity this is also part of creation is to be able to um not just hold the positive side as well, but also consider all the potential negative side effects. And when we create with such attention and intention to be able to not just look at what it is that we focus on, but also look at all the other contingencies, that it actually helps us to create something that's, that is going to benefit more than ourselves, that is going to benefit everyone so that is the that is what polarity is there to teach us to be a better creator 
And then so the seventh law is generation. The word that Matthias used is generation. So my understanding of generation is when you look at, this is the, the root chakra. It is where each of us, when we were born, we come, we come from the root chakra. We come from our mother's womb. And then through the root chakra, we come into this world. And so my mother created me. So I am this generation. And what my mother believed in is maybe not everything that I believe in. So that is really what the generation is about, is that everything is, creation is about transformation. So my mother has her being, and so she created or procreated me. And so I adopted some of her beliefs. However, it is really up to who I am to take from her experience, from her beliefs, and kind of try it on myself and see what works for me and what does not work for me. And it is really up to me to transform that energy. So whatever it is that my mother passed on to me from her um, DNA and also my mother, my father's DNA and their parents, like grandparents, great, 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 grandparents so it is now up to me to create something completely new so to understand that everything um, transforms so it's about transformation of energy every something for something new to be created something old has to die or be transformed into who I am being. So it is about understanding this, that everything is um, destruction has to be the beginning of creation as well. And one creation is simply the, um, the generation of the next creation. So there is this cycle of birth, life, experiment, and then death. And from that death, there is new creation, whether it is physical death or simply changing our mind, changing who we believe we are. So we can never be, um, we can never be the same all the time. Because if we are the same, if we hold the same beliefs all the time, that means we're stuck. So there has to be some organic way to honor this system of transformation of energy. And, and it actually ties into creation as well, is that creation is really, it's not just about considering all the different diverging um, points of view in order to create something new, but it's also transforming these energies into something that has, that is um, a different form as well. So understanding this cycle of creation, that there has to be destruction and then comes creation, understanding that. So, so these are really the seven laws of the universe. And these seven laws are there within our body as energy centers. And when our belief system or our thinking, the, the, um, what we focus on is out of balance, then it manifests as imbalance in different chakras so as a when we can when we can actually start to be congruent with who we are meaning that when we really understand all of these seven laws of the universe 
and also live, not just understand them and know about them, but actually live our life um, in accordance of these seven laws. And then this is where, when we can actually start to ascend, become, be the best version that we can be. Because when we get to the point where we're so congruent with who we are, when we can use and be comfortable living our life and considering all these seven laws and be congruent with these seven laws, then we get to the point where we, like everything we touch becomes magical because whatever we think, that's really the reality. Our reality would shape around what we think because we are absolutely congruent. And when you look at the world outside, like for example, right now, if you look at the world outside and so you just have to check in. So what do you feel when you look outside? If you, when you look outside, you feel fear, then you know that it's because fear already exists within you. That's why it's being projected outside. And when you really understand that, that as you um, embody all these seven laws, and when you know that bad things happen so that we can all keep, our, keep that conversation open. I, I, I know we, we talked about, you know, the, the, um, there's a war that, that kind of started in, um, very recently is the war started. It's because one person or one entity decided that they want what they want and they don't want to, they, they don't want other people's objections. So they have their own thinking and they want to impose their thinking onto someone else and onto their reality. So it is really up to their, whatever it is that comes after, it's really their intention. Does that mean that they are going to um, succeed initially and be able to succeed? I don't know. It really depends on their intention. What is their intention? And how their intention is serving the whole humanity um, or not. And if it's not serving the whole humanity, then within the human collective, there will be objections. There will be other entities that is going to come together in order to um, stand against that. And in order to get to the point where different opinions have to be taken into consideration to come up with a new solution that is going to be good for everyone. So how long is that going to take? I don't know. It really depends on the, um, the collective, what it is that our collective is going to tolerate or not call tolerate. So these, this is really what I want to talk about, the seven laws. And I just want to um, summarize it as well, is that, so there is only one law, and that is mind is everything meaning that who you are being is what you're going to experience. If you truly understand that and get to the point where you feel the congruence within, who you, when, who you think you are correspond with, when you can see that being correspond outside, when you get to the point where 
everything outside your your mind is actually only focusing on the things that you want to experience then you're going to shape reality according to what you your mind what resonate with your mind and this is not new there have been many other i've heard something very similar to this for example marina jacobi she mentioned the hologram so it's actually very similar to what she says it's just that she explained it in from her understanding which is is really about holding a certain vibration and when you hold that vibration meaning that when you become congruent with your being then you will actualize that timeline for yourself that will be what you experience and also i remember um listening to oh okay what's his name i forgot so he's talking about he's actually a lot of um so he's talking about how when we say we want something okay i want to live in a bigger house for example i want to live in a you know um four bedrooms um and you know three baths i want a backyard i want a swimming pool and all of that so let's say that's what i want so if in my mind i always think of i want that i want that so that really is our our message to the universe is we want that so I, the universe is going to um attract and bring you all these videos about people living in you know four bedrooms three baths and beautiful big houses so because that's what you want so the universe is going to you know bring all these images to you so that you can want more so how to shift that around is to be that to get to the point where you already feel what you would feel when you're living in that four bedroom three baths and house and with a with a backyard and and also um swimming pool as well so when you actually feel who you be as that person that's living that the the beingness of the the person that is living in that kind of house when you embody that then the house is going to somehow drop on your lap so when you are being so this is what i mean by that mind mind is not what you think or what you want is about who you be when who you be is somebody that is living in that house already then the house will somehow manifest and drop into your reality so this is really summing up what mentalism is about so when you see that your reality is different from that from what it is that you want then you need to tweak and change the thinking within yourself to start to align yourself so that you get to the point where when you think of that house you instead of feeling oh i want that you actually feeling i have that when you at that point then whatever you want whatever you be is going to have to show up in your life and that is really what these seven laws are trying to teach us it's, it's these seven laws are placed within our body to teach us to be responsible congruent creators and when we actually live our lives understanding these seven laws and really living these seven laws then life will will be feeling like we're in heaven because 
whoever we be, we would experience that. That's what I want to say for this evening about the seven laws of the universe. <laughs>